The most important question that you'll be asked at any interview is, do you have any questions? You definitely should. Keep watching and we'll discuss. I'm Richard and this is Richard on Data. So when you ask an interviewer a question, there are a few different things that you can accomplish. First of all, you do need to ask some questions in order to demonstrate to the interviewer that you're engaged, you're interested, and that you're thinking about the right things. But above all else, asking questions helps protect your interests too. There are tons of organizations out there that you really don't want to work for, and there are some red flags that you should sniff out. But more generally, data departments can vary substantially, and you do want to find out if you're going to be in a working environment that you're genuinely going to enjoy. So I'm going to give you seven different questions that I recommend asking your data science job interviewer. These questions are going to make you look good, and they're going to help you figure out if the job is right for you in the first place. But before I do that, Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and also take just half a second of your time to smash the like button to this video because it really does help my content reach a larger audience. Also in the description of this video I'll have a link to my Patreon account, and if you guys would be willing to support me over there it would mean the world to me. Alright, so one of the first questions you want to ask is, how does data science provide value to the organization? Or maybe putting that a different way, how exactly do data science projects align with business goals? On one hand, this is something that people who are just fresh out of school don't necessarily ask as much. A lot of those types, honestly, are hammers in search of a nail, where the hammer in this case is things that they learned while they were in school. If that's you, or even if you're somebody with more experience, then asking this kind of question will communicate to the interviewer that you're somebody who's focused on the bigger picture. And it's not only that, but it is a great question that should give you some valuable information about the organization's overall strategy, their structure, and the specific data department. It'll tell you if data science is all part of a bigger, more strategic plan, or the company is just trying to get in on the hype. Now for this one, you do have to have done a little homework. Obviously, at a bare minimum, you want to have researched the company a little bit and know what it is exactly that they do. But then hopefully on their website or earlier in the interview process, you at least get some kind of idea about where they're going strategically as well as how they differentiate themselves from their competitors. Connect those dots all the way down to where your role is going to fit in. It'll be pretty informative. The second question you want to ask is, what technologies does the department use for data analysis and data science? Now there's a wide range of answers that you might get for this depending on the department's maturity. I've been in a number of interviews myself where the interviewer states that they're technology agnostic. That is, they don't have their own official suite of tools, rather it could be more situational or it's just based on whatever their client wants. But in those instances, those were very up and coming data science departments and they were just beginning to find their footing. And there's nothing wrong with that because I was either totally comfortable or actively looking for a job just like that. But it might not be what you're personally looking for. Maybe you want something that's a little bit more structured, like it's a straight up Python shop or something like that. And I will say, if the org claims to have a fully developed data science process, but then they tell you that they're completely technologically agnostic, that's a big red flag that they may not be as organized as they tell you that they are. Which is a perfect segue to another question you should ask, which is, how do the various people who work in different data roles interact with and collaborate with each other? So anybody who's been working on big data projects for some time will tell you the various different data professionals involved need to be in close collaboration, if not just tied to the hip, in order for the project to be successful. Some organizations have cross-functional teams that work together using an agile framework, and that's just one example. There's tons of different ways that you can structure teams. Now if you get just fuzzy details or nothing at all here, that's a big time red flag. 
The reason being, there's lots of organizations out there that just want somebody to be their go-to person for everything data. Or alternatively, they have data problems, and their best solution for that is just to throw different bodies at it. Those situations are one-way tickets toward job dissatisfaction and frustration, so you want to avoid that. Ideally, there should be some kind of structure in place that facilitates people working together. And you'll also get a sense of maybe they have data architects who curate the data, then they pass it on to you, then you pass it on to some machine learning engineer who puts your output into production, or if all of that is on you. And it's not only that. The more collaboration that you have, the more opportunity there is to catch mistakes, which do happen in data science and are definitely not something that you want all on you. And speaking of not wanting everything to be all on you, another question you want to ask is what sort of data infrastructure they have in place. This is really going to demonstrate that you're a comprehensive thinker. Like I said, there's way too many data scientists who come out of school and all they're focused on is visualization and modeling. But experienced data professionals will all tell you that what's far more impactful to the quality of your output is the quality of the data itself. So just asking this in the first place demonstrates professionalism. So if the company doesn't have any sort of managed infrastructure in place to support data quality, this is another one of those things that virtually guarantees you're going to have a bad time. You may or may not personally want to get involved in building all the infrastructure out yourself. This is another one of those things that depends on what kind of data scientist you want to be. But if the organization doesn't understand the hierarchy of needs that underlie machine learning, or they don't know why that infrastructure is important in the first place, you want to run and you want to run fast. Another question that I really like is, what's the plan for you for the next three to six months? This is a big one. Right up front, it's one of those questions that really demonstrates your enthusiasm and your interest. But you also want to understand if you're going to be working directly with a client or you're just going to be working internally within the organization. But this is another one of those questions that, suppose if the interviewer can't answer it coherently, then they might not really know what they're doing with data science in the first place and the organization is pretty disorganized. You need to be coming on for a pretty specific and well-defined purpose that's easy to break down. If not, well, that's probably a red flag. The sixth thing that you should ask is if the organization has any way of supporting the continuous education of data scientists. I think this is an incredibly fair one to ask because right up front, it demonstrates that you're thinking in the long term and you're not just in it for a few months. I don't need to tell my subscribers that, at least here in the United States, there's a lot of job hopping and jumping ship after two to three years that occurs. And at least with data scientists, some of this is due to stagnation that occurs when you're doing the same thing over and over again for a year, but meanwhile the field is continuously evolving. So even to be forward looking to this in the first place is a proactive thing and it's a good thing. And being at the forefront and understanding what's happening in the field as it evolves is good for your organization because it is going to help you deliver in a bigger and better way. There's a lot of things that this could look like. It could mean funding conference attendance. It could mean paying for a semester of tuition or for a Coursera certification. But I do think at this point, it is reasonable to expect something like this. Then here's one final question that I learned a while ago, and I recommend everybody ask, regardless of whether you're interviewing for any kind of data capacity or not. And that question is, suppose you were to hire me, what would have to happen such that in one to two years time, you and management are sitting around at a table together and you're reflecting on the time you hired me, talking about what a great decision that was? I love this question. This has the potential to flip the entire nature of the interview on its head and maybe make the interviewer sit there for a minute and have to think themselves. And it's going to completely illustrate what the organization's expectations of you are and to an extent how you're going to be evaluated. 
And it also demonstrates that for you, delivering value is the name of the game. So ask this question. I really think that it'll work for you. So we've gone through seven different questions that I recommend asking a data science job interviewer. And I shouldn't have to say this, but I will say it. Don't be a robot. If they cover these topics during the interview process and you feel like you have a pretty good handle on them, there's probably no reason to bring them up unless you just want more clarity. And also, don't rip these questions word for word. Be a human about it. Be organic. They do hire humans to work at data science jobs, at least for now. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you'd like to support my work, please consider sharing this video. Also smash the like button and then leave me a comment down below and let me know how your data science job interview process was. Then I'll see you all in the not so distant future. Until then, Richard on data.